The views on this program do not reflect those of ONTV or its board of directors. Welcome to OAA Now, your home for Oakland Activities Association news and information. Here's your host, Sammy Terrina. Welcome to OAA Now here. I'm Sammy Terrina, blog around the OAA, one of the hosts of Last Week Brain Cells and the host of Between Terminas and Oriented Television. I'd like to welcome those watching our local voice on SoundCloud and also those watching on Oriented Television. A lot to talk about this week, obviously. A lot of basketball to break down. Um, some teams that we got to talk about, obviously, that's having some issues. Um, we're going to break those teams down um, coming up on this episode of the pod. Um, let's talk girls basketball first. Of course, this is one of the most unique ones. Um, when you really look at the seasons that each team's had, I mean, like, you're starting to get an idea of everybody, um, especially in the girls basketball docket, considering, you know, you've had teams that played between eight, nine, ten games. Um, I, there's one team I've got to talk about in particular that really has um, has had some struggles a little bit. And, you know, I really want to look at what is wrong with this team um, right now. And I, I really think, you know what I mean, when you really look at how everybody's been in the division thus far, I mean, like, who's been, who? I mean, like, who's been rolling, who's not been rolling. Um we got to talk about teams that have been rolling right now. Um, obviously, you look at a team like Bloomfield Hills, who's been really rolling right now. I mean, the way that they've been playing really good basketball. You know, yes, people are going to say about the schedule and say, okay, the schedule hasn't been the greatest, but you're winning games. That's really what it is. Um, there, I mean, like a team that's been a team that's been rising in the blue lately. Um, other teams have been. You know, a team that I've really got to talk about from the blue right now who's been just kind of, you know, been struggling a little bit. Um, Oak Park's been up and down a little bit. I mean, like, um, you know, yes, they, I mean, they, there's been some games where they look good, where they put up at least 50 points. I mean, they put up against Detroit Martin Luther King. Um, then they put up um, a 52 on Pontiac. Um, but when you really look at, Oak Park, I mean, their issues is, you know, they don't, they don't play really well against teams that are really well, I would say, like, organized, you know what I mean? Even decent teams, they tend to struggle against them. Um, so when I really look at with Oak Park, I mean, like, clearly, you know, they didn't look good against, um, against, um, against Neckerville. They didn't, they didn't look very good against them. Um, they didn't, haven't looked good against Booby Hills or Farmington. Um, and then, you know, you look at them. I mean, they're going to, I mean, like third place in the blue division is pretty much, I really believe it's wide open considering what's been going on with Avondale. Um, I mean, because clearly, you know, in that division, it's, you know, you got Blue Hills, it's the top team, um, then Farmington. But really with Avondale, Oak Park, Ferndale University, Ferndale, and Pontiac, you really just don't know um, what team's going to break out from that. I mean, who's going to be the one that... I mean, I thought it would have been Avondale, but they have really been struggling the last three games. I mean, like, they really have... They haven't been playing really well. And, you know, when you clearly look at that, that's going to be a problem. Um, so... And then you look at obviously Ferndale, Ferndale University, and Pontiac. They're both are all three teams are going through really difficult rebuilds. Um, I mean, I think if there's a team that has to break out of that pack, I mean, like right now, now with Ferndale, you can't really judge them because they haven't played a game in about three or four weeks. They haven't played a game. I mean, I mean, like, you can have all the practice time in the world, but you got to play games. I mean, like, that's the problem I have for Coach Keith Paris and his team. Um, and then you look at Ferndale University, they're going through a really tough rebuild. I mean, it's a difficult rebuild for the Eagles. You know, I really probably underestimated Ferndale University and said, you know, maybe that this team would be a team to watch for going into the season. but. They really have, I mean, they've really struggled. I mean, like, you know, with, you know, trying to develop that team. It's good. It was, a, I mean, like, maybe I kind of said, you know, maybe with Ferndale U, um, that they could have basically, you know what I mean? Like, they haven't been able to get things done. 
I mean, like, that's really what it is. And then Pontiac, Pontiac did show some strides, though. They scored 12 points against Oak Park. Um, that is a plus for Coach Corey Lett. That is a positive for them. I mean, for them, it's just you got to get them scoring points. I mean, you got to get them scoring points. You got to get them, you know, to say, you know what? I mean, like, to believe what we're doing, um, hustling each game. Um, getting better each game. Um, I think there is a stride of improvement for them. I think there's an area where they can improve on, obviously. But when you really look at the division right now in that blue, um, kind of looking at with Avondale, um, you know, I thought Avondale, you know, they they were getting real close to 500, and then they had a really tough setback. Um you know, and they and they've lost a couple games that should not have lost. I mean, like, so when you really look at when you look at the blue, um, kind of really trying to put together that division, and it's and it's a it's a difficult difficult scenario. Um, you know, be, be after Farmington. I mean, like, it, I mean, like in Farmington, we know when they get into the blue, they're a good team. But when they get into non-league, that's where they have some problems. I mean, you look at Farmington, I mean, like, they're, I mean, they play very well against the Blue. And then when they play, you know, they played some good non-conference teams. I mean, I mean like, I mean, they played against, I mean, decent teams. I mean, they played Troy, um, lost a tough one by one there. Then they lost to North Farmington where they're just completely blown out. And then losing to Berkeley, of course, Berkeley, that is a whole mess right there. That is a whole written mess right there um, with the way that that team's been the last few games. Um, but, you know, that, but for Farmington, you have players. You have Yasmin Thorpe. You have Carissa Hankins. I mean, like, you know, I mean, like, when you get in the district, when you get the postseason play, you know, you're going against teams that are not in your division. You're going against teams that, you know, obviously you've got to deal with North Farmington. you got to deal with South Arts and Tech. Um, you got to deal with Farmington with Mercy. I mean, it's going to be difficult for Farmington and for Coach Laura Guzman if you cannot be able to beat non-conference teams. I mean, that's clearly what it is. I mean, that is the problem I have with Farmington is they have an inability to lose to non-conference teams, and that's a big problem. Um, Bloomfield Hills, with their case, yes, they're 6-1. I mean, like, you know, but... I mean, like they've really toughened up their non-conference. I know they play Birmingham Marion later in the year. Um, they've got Summit Academy. Um, they still got to play Detroit Cody again. Detroit Cody was absolutely crushed by Renaissance the other night. Um, but for Bloomfield Hills, I mean, like I really like where that team's at. I mean, they're getting better. I mean, Chris and Massey's doing a nice job getting them wins. I mean, like that's a good that's a good sign. Um. But the question for me is, where do they match up? I mean, they played Seahome earlier in the year. Um, lost that game, but it was a one-point game. They lost that one. I mean, they scored a 19-point fourth quarter. Um, and then how they match up against Groves. I mean, Groves, you know, Groves has been a team that's been up and down um, that, when it comes postseason time. And then you look at Birmingham Marion. I mean, they're not the same team that they've been. I know they're going through a... Um, through, I mean, they're, they've they been struggling a lot at the get-go, but they're starting to pick up a little bit, and they still got to play it. So, you know, so Boomby Hills, you know, the tests will be there for them. I mean, the tests are coming up. Um, it might not be in league play, but the tests are coming, especially for the postseason. Um, so, but, I mean, that's going to be where you can test them. I mean, like, I was surprised how, how convincing they blew out Avondale. I couldn't believe that. I mean, I thought it'd be a more competitive game, but seeing that score at 64, 17, I mean, like I'm going like, my goodness. I mean, what's going on with that team? I mean, like what is going on with Avondale? I mean, Avondale, you know, early on in the air, they were scoring. Um, Lily Titus has had a nice year. I mean, Madison Manyweather has had a nice year, but playing against, um, but they haven't been the same team since that Warren Mott disaster. I mean, so if you're Coach Roy Krishman, you really got to say, okay, you got to get everything back in the thick of it. You got to make sure you're okay. You know, how are we? How is the temperature of this team? And right now, when I look at Avondale, it is not good right now. It really isn't. 
I mean, you clearly, the numbers, the stats, they don't lie. I mean, that's really what I'm seeing with them right now is, you know, when you look at numbers and stats, they don't lie. You know, I mean, people can be very opinionated on this, but, but stats, numbers, production don't lie. They really don't. Um, let's go down from the blue to the white. Um, when you look at the white division, um, we mentioned, you know, this division's really going to come down to two teams. Um, and we're going to talk those two teams in a couple minutes. Um, looking at the games, I thought the win with Oxford, uh, the win with the Royal Oak, I mean, the, the win with, Nor- with North Farmington over Royal Oak, I mean, like, I didn't expect that one. I really didn't. I mean, especially with the way that, Bo- I mean, Royal Oak was coming in red hot. Um, I thought, you know, to be honest with you, um, you know, they were starting to put things together. They had some great wins in there. But then they played North Farmington, and they were just completely blown out. I mean, it was 54-28. Um, but you know North Farmington's got a lot of veteran experience, obviously. But still, um, you kind of, you kind of, yeah, I mean, Royal Oak's a young team. I get it. But, you know, I mean, you got, I mean, like, but you're gaining a lot of experience from this. And I know it's a positive for Coach Bryant to pot to look at that. But, you know, you got to be in those games where you can say, okay, um, maybe, you know, we can stand up to a Detroit Renaissance in a postseason because that's where you're going to have to be at come postseason time. Or Detroit Mumford, you know what I mean? Detroit Mumford, we know what they've been playing. They've been playing some good basketball. I mean, they just had a girl put 31 up on Harper Woods. and see, I mean, um, and Soraya, I think, Patterson. I mean, she put up 31. Um. But when you really look at, you know, when you look at this division, um, besides the two top teams, I think Royal Oaks the third team. Um, Harper Woods has really been a team that's been just kind of on the upward swing, but they have a glaring weakness. I know they rely a lot on Cecilia Peterson to carry him. But when you look at, of course, their game with Adams, I mean, like, and Adams, we know, has been struggling. Um... But for Adams to put up 55 points against them, I mean, yes, they lost that one. I think it was 61-55. Um, we know Harper Woods can score. I mean, we know they can. I mean, they're putting up over 50 points each game. But when you don't defend anybody, that's a problem. That is a serious, serious problem. And when you look at that district with, for Harper Woods, you got Gross Point North, you got, Gross Point South has been around 500 this year. You got St. Clair Shores Lakeview's been unexpectedly struggling. Roseville's been struggling. Um, you kind of want to say, you know, Har- you might want to put like Harper Woods got a chance in this district. I, d- I don't think that's the case at all. I mean, I think Gross Point North, you know, with the way they've been playing, they got some really good players. I like Jenna Echo a lot. Then they got um Ariat, the younger Ariat on that team, Annabelle Ariat. Um, there's a lot to look at with Harper Woods. They got they're gonna have their hands full. You no know, coach Anthony um Anthony Brown, he's gonna have his hands full. I mean, clearly. Um but when you look at Harper Woods, you know what I mean, it's clear to me, you know, they can score. But can they defend? That's the big question. That's the question I, I can see um with them. Um Rochester Adams, I talked about them earlier. Um, you look at the Highlanders. Um, basically, with Adams is you have. I mean, they put fifty-five points up. That is the most they put. I think that's the most that they've scored under Coach Joe Malberg. I mean, in his two years there at Adams, I, I mean, like fifty-five points is a great number. Yes, I mean the defense was an issue in that game, but if you can get that production each night offensively. Um, then I think you're going to have, you're going to have great, great success going forward. And yes, they got a young team. Morgan McPherson's a really good player. Um, they got others as well. I mean, like you look at a player like, um, I mean, they got others as well on that team. I mean, they, I mean, like, I think Adams will be fine. I mean, like, I'm not going to say like, you know, that, you know, like everything's going good, you know, scoring 55, you know what I mean? But then the next week they go and score at least 15 points. I mean, I'm not going to say that. But when you really look at Adams, I mean, like, this is a very young team. A very young team. And for them to put 55 
That's a great start for them. It really is. Um, do I expect them to put 55 up in a, another game? Yeah, I do. Um, but when you really look at Adams, um, I think they're going to be okay. I, I think that Joe Malberg's team's going to be okay. I really do. Um, and I think they're, 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 I think better days are ahead for Adams. I really do. Um, then there's Troy Athens. Um, when you look at the Red Ox, um, how do I explain Troy Athens? I mean, they're as good as Skylar Emerson takes them to. And I think that's a good analogy. When Emerson plays well, they play well. When she doesn't, they do, they don't play well. And their loss to Seaholm, I mean, like, um, Emerson did, I think he had 12 points in that game. Um, and then, you know, Rebecca Delilah, she had 19. So the bottom line is, when I look at Troy Athens, but the problem with Athens is, they are 1-4 and four in their last five. That is not a good sign for Coach J.C. Klump. That is not a good sign. I mean, clearly to me, the struggles that Adams had, I mean, that Troy Athens has, you know, I mean, like, they didn't have enough offense against Seaholm. That's clearly what it is. You got to get credit to Seaholm. You got to. Bottom line is, here's a team that's got, bottom line is, for Troy Athens, they have not been the same team since they beat our tribal Troy. They haven't. I mean, I know they put a lot into that game, and they put a, and they put a lot of energy in that game. But it's clear to me that the problem with Troy Athens is they're not a consistent team. They are very inconsistent. And I know it's got to make Coach J.C. Klump nuts. It's got to. Really does. Um, and then there's Berkeley. I mean, Berkeley. I know what's been going on behind the scenes, you know, and it's not good. I mean, like, and it's and it, you know, you look at you look at that they have players, they have the playmakers. You have Sammy Withrow, you have um Ava Beard, you have um Malvin Nolan. I mean, like, I mean you, I mean like you had the players. Jillian Gomes has been up and down, and I think that's a problem for Coach Cody Feltner. But when you look at, obviously, one other thing is, I don't know, honestly, you know, and I'm going to be honest with you, I, I just don't know, honestly, if Coach Cody Feltner has adjusted well to the girls' game. I don't know. I mean, like, when you look at differences from coaching girls and coaching boys, I know, um, Feltner's got experience coaching boys. He was at Ferndale University. But, you know, it's totally a different game coaching girls and coaching boys. That's what I would say to him is, you know, I mean, and, and I know he'll, and I know he'll say, you know, and I know he'll say that, you know what I mean? Like, it's, it's a different game. It really is. The bottom line is, you know, when you look at the results, I mean, yes, you've had some tough losses. You've had that tough loss to, you know, Utica Eisenhower start the year. I think the Royal Oak Shrine game, that was a mind-boggling game. Um, but then you got to hope for Berkeley is that win against um, that win that against Farmington maybe turns her season around. I mean, like, you don't, I mean, it's clear to me, you know, that they're not the same team without Ashley Loon. I mean, like, that is a difficult adjustment for Berkeley is, you know, when you don't have an Ashley Loon, you know, type player that can stabilize things, you're going to struggle. And that's what I'm seeing with Berkeley right now is they're all not on the same page right now. And if it's going to take some time for them to get on the same page. Let's not forget, this is the same team that, you know, really struggled last year, you know, adjusting to each other. And then they go and beat Detroit Renaissance in a district final. Um, and that was Detroit Renaissance's last loss was to Berkeley in the district final. Now, albeit now Detroit Renaissance has got a different, a new coach there. Um, they, I mean, they still got the same players. I mean, like, obviously you got them, you got them, Christian Sanders, you got, um, you got Nevaeh Otis, the Groves transfer. Um, you have, um, you have Myra Hardy, um, who has really, um, really improved this year. I mean, like, you know, basically it's like a change of system. So I know it can be done. You know what I mean? Adjusting to, you know, coming from the boys game, to coach the girls game, it can be done, but it's got to be done, you know, 
Now, you got to look at the talent level. Obviously, you know, Detroit Renaissance and Berkeley are two different animals. But the talent level is a lot different from Berkeley and Detroit Renaissance. It is a lot different. So it does take some time to adjust. But, you know, it's your second year. So it's important for you to have your system in place. And it looks like, you know, when you look at the numbers, you look at stats, it looks like Feltner's system is clearly not there right now. It really isn't. So that is something for Berkeley that they've got to fix. I mean, they've really got to fix that. It's the players buying in, but it's also the coach buying into the players and what he has. So that's my take on Berkeley. It really is. is you know, it's like putting, it's like putting, putting a pie together. That's really what it is when you look at Berkeley. Um, see home when you look at them. I mean, like they're coming off. They played a tough schedule. Addie Flynn's been a really good, consistent player for them. Um, I think for Coach Chris Manchester, obviously. Um, I think you need to get Shane Manchester going. That's the key for see home going forward for them. Um. So we'll see what happens, but we'll see what happens there with them. I mean, clearly the two top teams in the white is North Farmington and Oxford. Um, North Farmington, of course, they're still undefeated right now. Um, nine and oh, um, coming off a big win. Um, I know they've had some good wins. Um, they're on a collision course with Oxford. I mean, they really are. Um, and then there's Oxford. I mean, Oxford's coming off. You know, when you look at Oxford, people are going to say, well, have they been tested lately? I mean, like, ever since the Birmingham Marion game, I mean, they had that scare against North Branch. Um, I mean, like, yes, they're coming off that loss at Lake Orion to start the year. Um, and the, But they've had some good wins. I mean, they beat North Branch. They've knocked off Birmingham Marion. But beating Clarkson for them is a big deal at Little Caesars. I mean, that game, you know, that game, I mean, like, that third quarter was the difference that game. I mean, like, clearly, when you look at the play of Nevaeh Wood in that game, um, she had 12 points. Um, I know that, um, you know, Miranda Winemco, Peyton Richter, um, and Allison Upset had eight points each in that game. Um, I'm going to talk Clarkson in a minute. I think, they're, I think they're in some trouble. I really do. Um, but the fact that they shut down, I mean, like, they shut down some really key plays. They shut down Ali Roback. They shut down... Um, Ava Hernandez, they shut down Kira Tomi. Um, that says a lot. I mean, they shut down Emily Valencia, they shut down um, Mia Zorsky, but that says a lot. Um, you know, for Oxford to beat a red opponent like that in um in a really good um in a really good Clarkson team. I mean, like, that says a lot right there for them. It really does. Now, they still got to play Lake Orion again. That'll be really interesting now. Um, and I think they still got them. Um, you know, that's their big non-conference game coming up. And then I think they still got them. Um, I got to look at the rest of their non-conference. But when you really look at Oxford, um, they're rolling with confidence right now. They are a much different team since that Lake Orion game. They're starting five and very good. I mean, that's no doubt. The bench is still a question mark for them. I just think the bench is still a question mark. If they can get production from the bench, then that could be a scary team going forward. I mean, that could be a really scary team come postseason time. Yes, they're in that district with Grand Blank. I think they could, I think they're a better team than Grand Blank. I really do. Um, but the way that they're playing right now, it's hard for me to trust Grand Blank. Yes, Grand Blank's got Chelsea Bishop, Jada McCray. Um, and those are really good players, too, that Grand Blank has. But I just think if I put him against Oxford right now, right now I would take Oxford over Grand Blank right now. I mean, that's clear as day right now. I mean, that district's going to be really interesting over at Lapeer. I mean, Davison's not been very good. Grand Blank, I mean, like, um, Lapeer's not been very good. Holly, we know, has been struggling. Um, I mean, like, even though they're better than they were last year. But it's clear to me that the two top teams in that district look to be it's going to be Grand Blank and Oxford. But Oxford right now in North Farmington are on a collision course with one another. Those two teams got to play twice. Um, I know North Farmington goes up to Oxford first, which would be really interesting because they did not go to Oxford last year, um, which was really, 
sad in my opinion. You know what I mean? That that North Farm didn't go up to Oxford and played them. They only played once last year. So that should be some motivation for Coach Rachel Breyer in the Wildcats. Um, you know, taking on the North taking on North Farms and obviously North Farms, we know what they have with Le- with Leffler and Query. Um, I think that, you know, when you look at the play of Sal Leffler and Penelope Query, that's really been the difference for North Farms and has been those two players having really good games. You know, they've gotten good games from Eliza Muller. They've gotten good games from Jihad. Um, they've gotten some good games. I mean, like, I think if they can find that third score, I mean, that's clear today with North Farms. Um, so when we were to look at it, Oxford, I, I still think Oxford's a better team than North Farmington based on well-rounded wise. I think that their starting five is, I could trust their starting five more than I trust North Farmington's right now. Um, I mean, like, I, I mean, like that those two games between North Farmington and Oxford are going to be really interesting. They were, they're going to be really interesting. Um, let's go now from the white to the red. Um, clearly, you know, when you look at teams that are rolling right now, West Bloomfield, obviously you look at, you look at Rochester, even though they haven't played in a week. I am very concerned about that with Rochester. Um, Lake Orion's coming off a, um, you know, two good wins against Southie Darson Tech and Holly, but we're going to know a lot about them with their next four games after Stony Creek, you know, starting with Stony Creek. Um, then they have to play Detroit Renaissance, Flushing. Um, who they just picked up, and then, and then you have um Grove. So we're gonna know a lot about the Dragons probably within the next two weeks. Um, and then you look at, you know, Clarkson's been struggling one and four in their last five games. We're gonna talk about them in a minute. Um, then you look at Groves. Groves has been, I mean, Groves coming off a tough loss to Detroit Country Day. Um, and then you look at Troy, um, Stony Creek. And then you have um, A&T. Um, when you look at this division, and I think, you know, obviously you look at the top three teams in this division. Um, I think with West Bluefield, obviously, you know, I-, I think they're getting a little disrespected in Nick McCabe's top t- top rankings. Um, yes, they're 7-2. and two. Yes, they've got two losses. But I think they're a better team than them. Um, I think deep down, I think they're a better team than Renaissance. I, I just think that. You know, with the play of the Davis sisters, the play of the Hendrick sisters, if you put that matchup right now on paper, I I still take West Bluefield or Renaissance, despite despite the weaknesses that West Bluefield has. Um, you know, clearly. I mean, like, but that's just my take on West Bluefield. I mean, they still got the issues with the lack of depth. But other than that, I think your starting five's very good. I mean, you know, you Playing both Hendrick sisters, both Davis sisters. Ava Lord's been having a nice year. Um, Destiny Washington obviously has been playing really well for them. Um, but when you really look at, you know, West Bloomfield, I mean, like, I think there is, you know, when you're playing against teams out of state, you know, that are going to test you, that's, that's going to help you, but also it could hurt you. I mean, like, you know, because you, the lack of familiarity. I mean, like, obviously, when you look at, West Bloom, but they still haven't played Rochester or Lake Orion yet. I mean, like, those are going to be really interesting matchups when the Lakers play those two teams. They still got Detroit Cast Tech and Detroit Edison they got to play, which is going to be both really interesting games in the Martin Luther King Showcase. Um, obviously, you look at Groves and Lake Orion, they're also in that showcase as well. Um, Lake Orion, of course, playing Detroit Renaissance, and then Groves taking on Riverview. Um, and South Arts and Tech is in that classic as well. Um, so, you know, when you look at the red, the kind of like, technically you got four teams in that division that are in, that are playing at the Martin Luther King showcase in West Bloomfield coming up on Monday. So it'll be really interesting to see what happens. Um, Rochester, we mentioned earlier, um, I'm a little concerned about their, la- the rust, um, you know, obviously not playing, I mean, coming back from break. I mean, that's going to be really interesting to see how they perform particularly in their Tuesday game against Clarkston, which should be really interesting over at Clarkston. Um, this is a matchup, I think, for Alice Max to go off in this game. I really do think that. Um, even though I think Clarkston's better guard-wise, matchup-wise, but the interior game, I, I just think that, um, I just think that, you know, Mac, if they can get Kyler Robinson going, that's, that's another element for Coach Bill Thurston. 
Um, yes, they've had Ava Williams, who's played well, who's had some spurts. Natalie Race has played, been really clutch for them lately. Um, you look at Rochester, I mean, they're a team that, you know, they could surprise some people. They could scare some people. I really do. Um, Stony Creek's coming off an impressive 73-32 blowout of Troy. Um, obviously, Mia Carson, 23. Sarah LaPrairie. Um, Emily Flynn. Um, you know, Aaron Flynn, when you look at those three players, they're really, they've been really good. I mean, Merrick Slaback's been solid. Lily Solick's been solid for Stony Creek. Um, Coach Kelly James, you know, they're just quietly going along their business. Um, so I'm curious to see how Stony Creek does this week. They got a big one with Lake Orion Lumen. Um, that'll be really interesting to see how that matchup's going to be. I expect that one's going to be a very defensive-oriented game. I think it's going to be really interesting there. Um, when you look at Lake Orion, um, obviously the two wins against A&T and, um, Hotley, of course, um, your coach Bob Bridges, um, you know what's ahead of you. You got a very tough four game stretch coming up. Um, so you gotta be ready. So my take on the Dragons is, you know, this is where we're going to know a lot about them. I mean, obviously, you know, you're going against some really good teams. Um, so I'll be very curious to see how the Dragons do, especially these next four games, um, how they, um, you know, how they respond, you know, because that could help them in a big way. You know, we'll see what happens. I mean, like, who knows? Lake Warren could surprise some people. I mean, they could. I mean, like, they're they're that good of a team. I mean, Chloe Wiegers, Maddie Ebert, um, Audrey Wishmeyer's been um been playing well. I mean, Taylor Denda's been playing well. Um, They've got an inside play, actually, solid inside play from Ryan Palazak. Um, Grace Sullivan's been really good for them. Um, Allie Mays has actually been pretty good for them. Actually, two threes against Holly. Um, the other night, I mean, Jody McCaffrey's been solid defensively. Um, and when you look at Lake Orion, I mean, like, this is a team that could scare some people. I mean, I don't think a lot of people in the state are talking about this team. I've been saying this to the writers like R. Simone or, like, you know, I've been saying, or, like, you know, like, please pay attention on Lake Orion. Seriously. Because they've got some playmakers. I mean, they got some serious, serious playmakers. Um, I mean, yes, they don't have Izzy Wolinski. She's out for the year. Um, I mean, and that's not mentioning Kylie Heck either. I mean, like, Kylie Heck is coming back from injury, and look what she's been doing. Um, so when you look at, when you look at these writers, I, I get they write about West Bluefield. They get, they write about, you know what I mean? They write about other teams like Clarkson or like, I mean, like, but seriously, you've got to take Lake Orion seriously, please. Um, that's what I would tell the sports writers. Any, any sports writer, um, with the exception of the, of MI prep zone, you can press, you know, you guys, they know about Lake Orion, but I think it's time for the state to take the dragons a little bit more seriously. Um, let's look at, um, Let's look at, of course, Groves. I mean, Groves is off um, to an interesting start. I mean, like, rough game against Detroit Country Day. I think they're going to be okay. I mean, like, you know, Caitlin Sanders, Cameron Little, Sierra Rocco, Lily Gallagher. I think they're going to be okay. I mean, like, if you go to Allison Heidi, you know, stay the course. You're okay. I'm not. Don't press the panic button on Groves yet. I wouldn't press it right now. Um, Troy, we know they're very young, obviously. I mean, like, they had that tough loss. Um, Diamond Prince, Reagan Zider, um, they're going to be okay. I mean, they're going to be fine. Um, Southfield Arts and Tech, um, Kamari Page, Christian Banks, um, tough. Um, they've got to find a way to shoot. I mean, like defensively, they're not very good defensively and they've got to address that. If you coach Shakia Coltrane, you got to really address your defense. Um, and then there's Clarkson. I mean, like when you look at the Wolves, story here. I mean, you're one and four in your last five games. I mean, you just had a really tough loss to Oxford. Now the schedule will ease up a little bit. Um, but you still gotta play but you still gotta play um you know Birdman Detroit Country Day. And then you got the second half of the red schedule which includes the likes of Lake Orion, Rochester, Clarkston, um Lake Orion, Rochester, West Bluefield. Um, I just don't know if 
you know, when you look at Clarkson right now, I mean, like, I know they're a different team without Matty Sarovsky or um, Izzy Haley. I know they're a much different team. But, you know, I mean, like, I'm curious to see how Ellie Roback, you know, how she handles this situation. Because, you know, for being a freshman, it's, it's, it's a difficult task. You know, being up on varsity, it's a really difficult task. You know what I mean? You know, having to lay that responsibility. Um, so, you know, yes, you got Ava Hernandez there. You got Kira Tomey there. You got Mia Zorsky there. Emmy Valencia is there. Um, but this team, Clarkson right now, is clearly struggling. And they sit at 500. I mean, like, they got Rochester coming up. So, I'm curious to see how that Clarkson-Rochester game is going to be. Um... You know, and then you still got that schedule brewing. Um, so it's, I mean, there's no easy games for Clarkson going forward. I mean, but it does ease up a little bit, which is a good signing for Coach Aaron Good now. Um, you know, before they play the second half of the league season, and then the postseason comes, obviously, you know, you're looking at that Clarkson Lake Orion um, district final likely clash going to happen. Um, so, you know, we'll see. I mean, for Coach Garen Good now, obviously Oxford, you know, that game against Oxford, that was a really tough loss for them at Little Seas Arena. Um, getting outscored in the second half, um, you know, getting outscored in the second half, um, you know, they didn't have a good third quarter in that game. I mean, they really didn't. Um, and that was different that game. It clearly was. So when you look at Clarkson, I mean, is it time to panic on them? Um it might be, but it might not be. I mean, they're in a crossroads right now. And this is where I wrote in the in the basketball thoughts that they're in a crossroads right now. So we're going to see what happens with Clarkson. I mean, yes, they played a tough schedule. They've got some good wins against some people. They beat Saginaw Heritage. Um, that is a good win for them. They've been battle-tested against Grand Blank. Um, the Red, we know what the Red does to teams, obviously. But I'm curious to see how this Rochester game is going to look for Clarkson coming up. I mean, like, that's going to be the game where, you know, to see where they're at. So, we're going to see what happens. Um, that's my thoughts on girls basketball right now. Um, when you clearly look at the the rankings, the thoughts, of course, I have them all on the blog at Saginaw Bay 4650 at com. I want to take a look at them. I do a top 23 poll every Saturday. Um, so if you want to take a look at them, I'm go right ahead. Um, Unless there are certain games that are being done on the weekend, obviously, you know what I mean? That will be updated as well um, with some of the changes in the rankings. So we'll see what happens going forward there. Now let's go from girls. I want to talk boys a little bit here. Um, when you look at the divisions, the gold division, um, I think to me it's clear that Harper Woods really is the one that stands out. Avondale, I think, is the number two team in that division. Yes, they had that tough, hard-fought loss to Troy. They've lost their last two games by combined three points, which is which is insane. Um, Ferndale University's been playing really good basketball um, lately, which has been a good sign for Coach Josh Nix. Um, and then you have um, and then Pontiac's been really been struggling. I've been really disappointed with Pontiac the last few games. I mean, they didn't look good against them. They have they've only they have not scored above forty points. That's a big concern for them. Um, and then. There is Southfield. Um, I have been just very disappointed with the blue with the Warriors. Um, when you look at Southfield, what the expectations I had coming in for them were okay, veteran team with a new coach, and it was and it's a very good coach in Terrence Porter. What I've been seeing is it is clear to me. Yes, they played a tough schedule, and they still got a very tough schedule ahead of them. So when you really look at Southfield. I mean, this is a team that's got some serious, serious concerns. I mean, you clearly look at Southfield and say, okay, you, you, I mean, like, they still got a very tough schedule ahead of them, but the fact that they're not winning right now, that is a serious, serious concern. And you look at, of course, with, I mean, with a and I mean, not, I mean, if that game's going to 50 points. You still got to play Detroit Country Day. You still got to play UND Jesuit. You got Lincoln Park, Clarkson, and River Rouge. That's difficult. So if there's a team that's not in big, big trouble right now, it's Southfield. 
they're in a loads of trouble right now with the way that they're playing right now. They have not been playing good basketball. I mean, they have they've lost six straight games. Now the, they play some good teams. I get it, but when you lose six straight games with a veteran team, that is just asking for trouble. And this team is in some big, big trouble right now. I think Southfield is in a lot of trouble. Um, and then you look at the division. Obviously, Furman University has been playing better. Avondale, we know they're going to be fine. Um, Harper Woods, they've been playing some good basketball lately. I mean, when you look at Southfield, Arts and Tech in this division, they're probably the fourth best team in this division. And then you have Pontiac's the last place team. Then I would say maybe Avondale, Furman University are pretty much even even Steven with each other, and then you have um, and then you have um Harper Woods, who I think is clearly the top team in this division. So when I look at A and T, this team's in a lot of trouble right now with the way they're playing. They haven't been able to get over fifty points. That is not a good recipe for success. They've been giving up a ton of points as well. That too, not a good recipe for success. Um, so a lot of trouble right now when you look at talking about the Warriors right now. Um, let's go now from the gold division to the, um, blue. Um, when you look at this division right now, I mean, like, I still think, you know, yes, Stony Creek has been a team that, you know, has been really been struggling, um, a little behind the eight ball, um, really interesting game with Lake Orion Lumen this week for them. I mean, like they got Royal Oak, um, coming up. I mean, that's going to be interesting. Royal Oak just suffered their first loss at the hands of Lake Orion. Um, and then you look at Berkeley's been rolling without their starting point guard. That says something right there, but it does help when you have players like um, Jacob Sarif and um, Timmy Rukovic. Uh, and then you look at Rochester coming back from the break. I will be very curious to see how Rochester does coming off from the break. Um, and then you have Oxford. Oxford's been rolling, been playing some good basketball lately. Um, and then Troy Athens has been really up and down. Um, so when you really look at this division, um, I do want to talk Royal Oak a little bit because they they were coming in undefeated. Um, you know, I mean, I mean, like Camden Clark's been playing good basketball. Rashad Wilson, Dylan Hopman, um, Davis Arbiter, all been playing good basketball. And then they run in Lake Orion. Um, you know, when you look at the schedule Royal Oak's played, I don't think Royal Oak and Stony Creek, when it comes to non-conference schedules, polar opposites of each other. You look at, people are going to say, well, why are you still high on Stony Creek despite the fact that they're on six? I mean, you look at the schedule Stony Creek has played, they have played a ridiculous non-conference. They have played Pontiac Northern Prep. They have played, you know, they have played Birmingham Brother Rice. Those are two teams that are just absolutely, you know, they're very good. They're good teams. They're good programs. They played Stevenson. Stevenson's pretty decent. Um, they play, they got to play Lake Orion. You know, they got to play, you know, they still got to play Adams. They've got to play Rochester twice. They still got to play Clarkston. They got to play Macomb, Dakota. If That is brutal. That is brutal. And you look at Royal Oaks non conference, who they've got to play. I mean, they've already played Pontiac and T. They played no, um, they played um, they played Royal Oak Shrine. They played now. No offense to those those non conference schedules, but I'm telling you what, Stony Creek's non conference is going to get them prepared for this division. It is the bottom line here. Yes, they're under the eight ball that lost to Oxford, but when you look at Teams that play really tough non-conference schedules, you know, Royal Oaks non-conference, I don't think it's helped them. You know, I don't think it's really helped them. I mean, it's shown that loss at Lake Orion. I mean, like, clearly, you know, you look at a team like Lake Orion has played a really difficult non-conference going against the likes of Adams, Clarkston, Holly. We know about Holly. Holly's been playing really good battle. They just beat Lakeland the other night. So when you really look at Playing a not a tough non-conference. I mean, Stony Creek has really been playing a ridiculous non-conference schedule. I mean, that's insane with what they've been going through. 
I mean, they're on. Yeah, people are gonna say they're on six. I mean, they're they're. Stony Creek is a better team than what they've shown. You know, you got players like Peyton Rumble who's been out with an injury. You look at Trey Walker. You look at Jacob Fulkerson. You got Aiden Z- 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 Zrosko. I mean, like, you know, they got players. So if you're Coach Jeff Owen, and yes, you're you're tr- trying to change the culture of the program, here's my thing on Stony Creek. You're fine. You're fine. Just focus what you got to do. You're fine. And that's why when you look at a team like Stony Creek, I'm not worried about this team. I'm not. Because I know when they get later in the year, this is going to be a good basketball team. You just watch. Rochester, we don't know with them. I mean, like, you know, because they haven't played in a week. This will be the first game coming up. So, you know, we'll see with Rochester. But I like I like what Coach um, Nick Cabola has done with that team. Really have. Um, Oxford, welcome back, Jake Champagne. I mean, he had a really big game against, um, Linden. I mean, 23 points. Um, Oxford's gonna be just fine. Um, Troy Athens, as I mentioned, hot and cold. Had that rough loss to Berkeley. Berkeley, I think, is gonna be more than just fine. I think with them, obviously, when you look at the Bears, um, they didn't have their starting point guard. But as long as you have Timmy Rekovic and Jacob Sharif, you're fine. I wouldn't press any panic button for Coach, Jeff, for Coach Joel Sermo. I wouldn't press any panic button. Um, and then you look at Seaholm, of course, coming off of a tough loss to um, Groves the other night. Um, it looks like they got some issues scoring. So we'll see what happens with Seaholm. Um, and then, you know, so when you look at this division... You know, people are going to say, who do you think is the best team right now in this division? I mean, when you look at the records, you would, it, it does say Berkeley and it does say Oxford. And they make a good point. You know what I mean? Berkeley's, Berkeley, they played it. They played a night. They played a, a decent non-conference. I mean, they played against Dearborn. Dearborn's a good team. I mean, Dearborn's a really good team. Um... But when you look at teams that played a brutal non-conference like Stony Creek has, I mean, like, my goodness. And the teams, they still got to play ahead of them. I mean, that tells you something about Stony Creek. They're going to be fine. I wouldn't press the panic button on Jeff Owens' team. Because they're going to be fine. Rochester, you know, I'm curious to see how they do coming out of the break. Um, And then you look at Troy Athens. They're... They're a team I think is in a, in a crossroads right now. Um, Royal Oak. Um, when you look at the Ravens, here's a team that's got um, here's a team that relies a lot of the three point shot. But you know, I'm curious to see how that non conference will help them. Um, I think it's more hurt them than help them. So that's how I'm looking at Royal Oak right now. Um, I think they could be in some trouble a little bit. See home, we know that they scrap. We know, um, but they're having issues scoring right now. Um, so that's my take right now with the blue right now is, you know, clearly the two top teams right now that stand out are Berkeley and Oxford with the way that both those teams are playing. Oxford just got Jake Champagne back. Um, Berkeley, we know they got Timmy Rukovic, but I'm telling you, watch for Stoney. I think they're going to make some, they're going to make a move in that division. You just watch. Um, what's going on from the blue to the white? Um, the white to me, I still think it's clearly one of the best divisions in the state that don't get really appreciated because everybody talks about the red and say, okay, I mean, like you look at teams that are, that have been rolling there in that division. You you got North Farmington, obviously you got West, you got Clarkston, you got Adams, you got Oak Park, um, and Ferndale's off to one and four, one and five star. I'm going to talk Ferndale in a minute um, when we talk the red segment. But when you look at the white, Troy, is, Troy and Bloopy Hills, people say, who do you think is better between those two teams? I think it's Troy because when you look at the Colts, they're not a deep team, but all five of them have seen a ton of starting time. And then you had John White's side of that. They really go six deep. They're not a deep team. But you look at Mason Parker, what he's been doing. I mean, like, he's been just phenomenal for them. 
Carter Cusmano has been a solid defender for them. Um, Zach Pinoza has had games who have greatness, but he's he he's played really well. Chase Kniper has been a solid rebounder. We know what Darius Whiteside can do. So when we really look at Gary Fralick's team, obviously they do their parts well. They do everything well. They'll rebound. They'll scrap. They'll shoot threes. I mean, you have a dribble driver, Mason Parker. We know he can shoot threes as well. I mean, like, I mean, and then you have John Weiss that come off the bench. He can give you quality minutes. So when you really look at Troy, you know, besides those six, you know what I mean? They're really good. And then we got Bloomby Hills. Yes, they haven't played in a week. Um, Drew Wilson's been good for them. We know about Noah Adrich. Um, we know about CJ Jackson. We know about Ahmad Taylor. Brandon Noel has been solid for them. I mean, Bloomfield Hills, I mean, I think Bloomfield Hills has got more depth than Troy does. But, you know, so I'm curious to see when those two teams play. Really am. Um, Groves, obviously, with both Drew Wilson and Drew and Drew Simpson. Coach Mark West's team has been going along with their business. I really like what they've been doing. I mean, they've got they're a good team. They're a really good team. Coach Mark West has done a really nice job with that team. Lake Orion, of course, welcoming back DJ Morrow. Morrow had a big night against um, Royal Oak, 24 points. Um, if Morrow makes that team so much different. Morrow makes Lake Orion so much different than they were. Because in the last three games, Lake Orion, you know, Lake Orion's had some injury issues, obviously. Um, but with him back, it stabilizes so many things for them. It really does. Um, but I'm very curious to see. How, I would like to see Lake Orion. Obviously, um, you know, they're playing good basketball right now. But if they can get some production from that bench, obviously, you know, you got players like Ryan Washoe, who I'm high on. Um, you got obviously, um, you know, I think you know, Gabe Scott's been playing really good at point guard lately. I mean, Gabe Scott's a really good, starting to become a true good floor general, you know? And for Jose Andrade's system, you know what I mean? You got to have somebody who can just stabilize things. Nate Havrilla stabilizes things. You look at Gabe Scott, I think he's getting there. Um, Blake Liddell, if he can, um, he can start getting some confidence back, you know what I mean? Look what he can do. Um, you look at Kevin Tobe, he's been playing, he's been, he's a solid defender. I'll tell you that much right now. Um, Lake Orion, you know, they get better as the season goes along. That tells you something right there. Really does. And yet nobody talks about it. Nobody talks about it. You know, and here's a team that's won a division title or shared a division title the last two years. That says something. And then Farmington, you know, yes, they're better. They're two and three <laughs> right now. I mean, going through that flu outbreak. Didn't look good against River Rouge. We're going to know a lot about Farmington next few days. <laughs> they got a lot of games coming up. So we'll see with them. We will see with Farmington. Um, let's go to the red now. Um, obviously, North Farmington coming off that big win against Grand Blank. Um, Ryan Hurst had 25 points in that game. Um, Grand Blank's a good team. We really are. I mean, I expect them to give Oxford some problems um, come postseason time. I still think Davidson's there as well. They can give us some problems as well. Um, Clarkson's been, if you watch, um, if you, Clarkson, all you got to know, know about them is go on the YouTube. I sent a link up and click the song Lifehouse Hang by the Moment because that's Clarkson. Um, I know, I know you look at, um, if I'm Clarkson and Lack director, Jeff Cozen, I would probably be listening to that song maybe at least five, six times a day because that's Clarkson's boys basketball team right now. That per that song, Life House, hanging by the moment because they've had a lot of close games lately. Desmond Stavis at 22 of their 36 in that game against them, Lakeland. Um, they've had to survive Fenton. They've had to survive Lake Orion. They've had to survive, um, you know, they've, they've had a lot of, they've had to survive, um, Detroit, um, I got old Detroit Academy. They got, they've had to survive that. I mean, like they've, that's been their whole season. 
hanging by the moment. That's a good that's a good ring for them. It really is. Adams been playing good basketball even with um without um Brady Prescorn. I expect Prescorn back coming back some point some point during the season. Um maybe even this week. I mean, here's to see how Brady Prescorn does when he comes back for Adams. I mean, like, you know, clearly, you know, he's a difference maker for Adams. He really is. Um I still can't believe how they lost that game to Rochester, though. I really can't. Hard to explain that one. Um, and then there's um, Oak Park. Oak Park had a statement against Redford Union. Um, I think it was 68 to 20. I mean, they just blew them out. They got an interesting couple games coming up. I mean, like, really curious to see how Oak Park does. You know, Coach Rand Shepard's done a really nice job with that team. The sophomore class, obviously, Geo Hutchins has been really playing really good basketball. Juan Holiday has been playing good basketball. Um, Robert Smith has been playing good basketball. I mean, Oak Park, they could seriously contend. I mean, that's how good they are. Only problem I have with Oak Park, though, is that UD Jesuit problem. How many of them beat the Cubs? I don't know why. I mean, yes, they got Sonny Wilson. But the last two years, they have not gotten the job done against the Cubs. And... That's got to change if, if Oak Park wants to turn things around. So we'll see what happens with them. And then there's Ferndale. Ferndale sits 1-4 and four right now. They have played a tough schedule. Here's my take on Ferndale. I have said, you know, it might, this is not the same team that's had Jason Drake and... Um, you know, and uh, Kenya, I mean, like Travion Lewis. Those are the two players that Ferndale had last year with really good last four years. Yes, they got Cameron Reed. They got Chris Williams. But when you look at Ferndale, you have got to E. If you're Coach Ron Rickman, here's my take. And I know this is going to create some controversy at Ferndale. But you got to ease up that non conference. Because, yes, you're playing. The tough games. You're playing tough teams. I get that. But when you look at the kids' morale, that's a concern. And when you look at the yes, he had to travel to Muskegon to play Muskegon. That's not an easy trip for those kids. And, you know, Ferndale is clearly struggling right now with the schedule. Because, the, I mean, yes, you're one of the top teams in the red. You're one of the top, you want to be one of the top teams in the state. I get it. Playing the tough schedule, I get it. But when you look at the morale of your kids right now, that's not a good sign. And if you're Coach Juan Rickman, I think maybe it might be time to ease up the schedule a little bit because what the fact of the matter is, if you can ease it up and get those wins, and if you're going to say, well, I'm going to use the red for that, that doesn't always. that's not always the case because that division, you got North Farmington there. You got Clarkson there, Adams there, Oak Park there. Those are not easy games. So if you're Coach Juan Rick, if you're Ferndale, you know, you got to get some, find a way to get some confidence in you. I mean, like, and the only way you can do that is maybe easing up that non-conference. Now, you still got a very tough non-conference coming up. You know, you got to go to Ohio. You still got, I mean, like, and that's not counting the red schedule. I mean, like, it's going to be a tough road for the Eagles. I mean, going forward. I mean, like, but if you're um, Coach Juan Rickman and you're seeing, you're seeing like why you're struggling, I think the schedule is a whole lot a part of that. You know what I mean? I mean, like, so that's how I'm looking at with Ferndale is I think it's clear to me in the district you're going to be fine. Um, regional, you could be fine. Obviously, you're still going to have to go through. There's some really good teams in that in that regional that you're going to have to go through. Um, I know you want I know teams want to say, play, play the best teams when you get to Breslin, obviously, you know, playing a tough schedule like that. But sometimes maybe just taking a break from the schedule, you know, and it could really help some teams out. And I think this is where a case where I can see with Ferndale going forward that schedule. So we'll see what happens going forward. All right, now I'm going to sign off here. Make sure you follow the blog at um, Saginaway4650 at blogspot.com for the latest information. Um, around the OA. Um, so we'll see what happens going forward. Um, you know, already I'm signing off here. Um, make sure um, take care. God bless. And I'll see you all next week, everybody.
Um, take care, and I will see you next week. God bless everyone.